It's true, you can go home again. After playing football here at Tennessee Tech University and serving as an assistant coach, Dwayne Alexander begins his first season as head coach at his alma mater. It's very special. Obviously, I played here back from 1983 to 87. This is my fourth time I've actually coached here. I've absolutely loved everywhere that I have coached and previous stops that I've made, but obviously being an alum of Tech and having played here and have been an assistant before, I'm really, really excited and feel very humbled and honored to be the head football coach here. Let's talk about, first of all, just the coaching transition and, and how it's gone so far for you all as a team. It's, 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 it's um, gone very good. Uh, coach Alexander was here when I first got here. And uh, the coaching staff cares, loves every one of us. Uh, it's not always by X and O's. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they just, just they, they put too much into this and the, their passion is very high. This is his alma mater, so I'm sure he wants to really succeed here. How, how does having somebody who played here help you all as a team, would you say? Very, very good. I mean, you, you can't come from the guy that's won, been here and has had a winning uh, season. and. He just bringing it back and you know doing what what he loves. It's gone great. Uh, we got a lot of these coaches. They passionate about the game. Um, they care about the team. They care more about character building than anything else. So I'm really enjoying Coach A and the coaching staff. How do you think that will help you guys not only in football but maybe in life after football? I think it'll, it'll make us better men overall. We'll become better men, better fathers. You know what I'm saying? It'll just help us on down the road, 10 years down the road. As far as this team is concerned, you inherited a team that did not have much success on the field last season. What will be some keys for your coaching staff to try to get things turned around here? We want to set a high standard. I mean, you've got to do that. You have to high, have high expectations or, you know, you're not going to be able to achieve anything, of course. Uh, for us to be patient and to be positive every day. We want to find a way to win the day. We want to be positive every day. It's not the first time I've taken over a job as a head coach where we've inherited a program that's been winless before. I've done that. My two previous head coaching stops Mm -hmm. I inherited teams that had gone through coaching transitions and winless or one-win seasons right. prior to my arrival. So I had a, you have a good idea what that's going to look like because mm -hmm. it's not just on the field. Mm -hmm. Usually when you're one in ten on the field, you're one in ten in about every area. You're usually one in ten socially. You're one in ten academically. You're one in ten in how you're doing things around campus. There's a little bit, and there's a lot of truth in that. Uh, not not across the board with every player, but right. as a whole as a team, there's a lot of truth in that. So going in and understanding that there's going to be some. Frustrating days and some of those things, but hey, we want to be positive. We want to do things right. We're going to set a high standard, have high, expect, high uh, expectations, and just go in every day. There's no really magic formula. If it were, I'd be on the speaking tour somewhere <laughs> trying to talk about how to do that. There's not a magic formula, but it's truly day in and day out of setting high expectations and being positive and trying to do things the right way. As far as this team being more competitive this season in the OVC, what are some of the keys to be a better team? Come together as a, as a whole, be consistent, and you know, just just have some uh, you know some some fear behind us, and just just go out every day, and you know, just say, hey, I want to get better today. Mm -hmm. No, no bad days. Just you know, just have a, have a good, great day every every week, every day, every second of the day. We can compete more in practice, man. Well, a lot a lot of the guys on the team not as physical as I want us to be. We're not as physical as we need to be for the upcoming season. So we just need to keep competing and be a little bit more physical. How do you see the LVC uh, league race uh, shaping up this season? Well, as of right now, I mean, uh, Jacksonville State has been king of the mountain, and they still are. They've won 32 straight conference games. Uh, they have won the OVC uh, four years in a row until somebody knocks them off. That's just how it works. Uh, they're still there, and they have a very good football team coming back. I do feel like the gap is closed between everyone else and Jacksonville State, just from what I've seen and observed. And obviously, having played and coached here in the OVC, and here as recently as 2015, I've always kept up with it and stayed close to it, even when I've been gone the last couple of years. I think Austin P was a great example of that last year. They were picked last to second to last in about every poll, mm -hmm. ended up going seven and one in the league. So I think if you look at all the scores throughout the league, year in and year out, I mean, there, you could really throw a blanket over the, you know, the other teams in the league. Everybody's chasing Jacksonville State, but I do believe this is the year that uh, somebody will have a chance uh, to get them. But I think it's wide open every week. You better come play every week because uh, you're always going to have a chance to, to, to win or lose. You can watch the Dwayne Alexander Show right here on North Central Television, Channel 15, Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock. Reporting from Cookville, Barry Hyatt, NCTV.